This video is mainly about the Traxxas Fortec, uh, this one right here, which is the Factory 5. Now this happens to be the truck. There's also a coupe, very beautiful, both of them. Uh, you can hook up the LEDs, it already comes pre-wired, everything. But I'm gonna make a quick little comparison, give you sort of the corner weights without a battery, then you can choose whatever battery you're using. Uh, I would get a hard top, a uh, hard pack. Uh, I do have some footage uh, out at the track where I take this one out. I also take the Mustang. Unfortunately, the receiver, the Traxxas receiver on this car gave out, so I wasn't able to run them both so you could see them side by side with a buddy of mine. Uh, so I ended up pulling the receiver out of this one, using it here. Very common with, I would say, Traxxas vehicles, or at least the TQI, those receivers just go out and... Uh, I'll have another video that specifically lets you know what happens when that happens. Uh, other than it just doesn't work properly. But I'm gonna do a quick little comparison. Here I have a Traxxas Factory 5. This is the pickup, which is a beautiful looking body. It does have the LEDs, everything. I did not connect them. This is the very first run. The tires are horrible. They're really bad, they're really horrible. Uh, this thing slips and slides, they are, the the rubber is very hard rubber, incredibly hard rubber. If you wanted to soften up these tires, you would have to put them in baggies and oil. So you can use some silicone oil, uh, shock oil would work, WD-40, the silicone stuff, which is the yellow can. That would be wonderful. Uh, you can use that, maybe even some brake fluid, uh, and then leave them in the baggie, out in the heat for a week. Maybe the only problem is they might balloon. Uh, so the other thing that you could do is try to scuff them up a little, clean them, uh, you know, wash them with uh, laundry soap, and then once you clean them up, use some uh, modifier such as Mighty Gripper, try the black one, and then sauce them, leave them until they're fully dry, hopefully in a hot area, and then do it again, and do it again, and again. Uh, now, really quick note, uh, with the Corvette, if you have seen my review on the Corvette from, that one's kind of old, uh, but a big issue with these vehicles, the Factory 5 and the Corvette is, or even the Supra, the Supra has the nicer tires, but they are 76 millimeters in diameter. Foam tires are 70 millimeters, uh, and the 2.0 tires, regular touring car tires, those are in the 60s. The Corvette looks very weird with touring car tires, but this one actually looks all right. So if you put the Mustang 2.0 tires or the 4GT, just the 2.0 tires on it, it actually looks fine. It looks good, probably because of the body. But as it is, you can see this thing. I mean, I'm trying to control it and it just has absolutely no grip. Now, is this a vehicle that I would recommend? Yes, absolutely. I would if you are just bashing in a driveway. Uh, because it reaches top speed in a very short distance, maybe within, say, 20-ish uh, feet, 7 meters, it'll reach top speed, and then you can turn, uh, power slide, so it's great for that, but actually controlling it, high speeds, and taking precision turns, no, it is not a very good vehicle. Uh, they do make sway bars and things that you can get. Keep in mind, it's the same platform as the 2.0. But you've seen how this thing's been driving so i'm going to fast forward and then i'm going to show you how the 2.0 handles on the same exact track same exact day and then after that i'm going to do a side by side and tell you what things you can upgrade and what you can do uh not that you would want to you're going to miss out on the scale and you'll see what i mean but here we go into hyperdrive so, I'm just speeding through this uh, really fast because I want to show you what happens. So this truck does not have a bumper unlike the 2.0, uh, which is something you have to be mindful of. Uh, if you accidentally hit something such as right here, you may break it. And I broke the truck, so that's it. I broke it, uh, shop didn't have the parts. I could swap them over from the 2.0, it's the same. Uh, but that is it. What ended up happening is there's a on the arm the lower bushing so there's a screw that holds the uh, caster block to the arm 
that thing just stripped out, took the bushing with it. So that's it. So now for the 2.0. And that blue car, that's the Fortec 2.0. That happens to be the uh, Grabber Blue uh, Ford GT Mustang. And notice how differently it drives. So yes, I cut the track on purpose. So if you watched another video, you'll know why I was trying to catch up to my friend to compare the, the car. So I have to get out of the way. But right now. Look at the difference in the handling. There is a difference. Now, this car does want to power slide, so you have to be careful with it, but it's a lot more predictable. It's easier to drive, mainly because of the tires, and yes, I was running brand new tires, and notice that impact. Let's see if you can tell. The body's flipped inside out if you look at that front right corner. Thank you. But, uh, so after that, I'm going to have to stop the vehicle because the body's actually rubbing on that tire, and that's why it's rubbing bad. But the point is, you saw how hard that impact was, and nothing broke on the car. So, just had to pop it back out and keep driving. Now, if you're wondering about the Factory 5 versus the 3.0 Corvette, I do have a video, it's an older video, where I compare the 2.0 with the 3.0, go over the basics, uh, but I'm gonna tell you some of the things right now. Uh, if you're planning on messing around, this is a pretty good vehicle. Uh, the 3.0 Corvette, for example, or the Supra for that matter, uh, actually the Corvette, I apologize, the Corvette has a clipping system. So it clips in the front and the rear, and then you just unclip the body, body clips back on. The problem with that is, let's just say you do take it out to a track, uh, the body will keep popping off when you hit the walls. Uh, that was the issue that I had with it. Well, actually a nephew, a nephew was driving it. Body kept popping off and the transponder was on the body. So they had to count his laps by hand. So you need to put sort of duct tape on it. Now this one, pretty simple. There's two clips in the rear, two body clips, which is what holds the body. Because you actually have body clips, this body will not pop off like the other ones do. And then you just slide forward because there's a claw right there and that claw goes right in that loop. And that's it. Now this is where you would plug in the wires for the lights, uh, but in order to put in the body, just make sure that holes and so then you have this. Uh, that's pretty much it. So let me go ahead and put this on the cutter weights before I remove the body and actually show you. A uh, long time ago, I also did a video before this thing was released, or maybe it was just released uh, for the second time. Uh, Traxxas had released the Factory 5 a long time ago. I don't remember how long ago. And then they stopped and then they re-released them. Uh, but let me set up the corner weights really quick. Now the 2.0 is the lightest vehicle. Uh, the Corvette is about 300 grams heavier than the 2.0. Uh, I mean, if you like the Corvette because of the looks, uh, go for it. I mean, it's it's your money, buy what you like. Uh, but the 2.0 is a lighter car. Traxxas does make a Corvette body that fits the 2.0. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. Uh, let's see, so setting these up. Uh, the tires, 2.0 has far better tires. The tires on the Factory 5 are probably just as bad as the, the Corvette. The Corvette has the worst tires. Uh, the Supra actually has better tires than the Corvette, but they're still horrible. Uh, let's see, we'll move these. All right, and what we have here, all right, so we have about a 54 rear bias and a 46, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, why? Because this thing loves to drift and you lose the, the rear quite easily. Now, left and right, keep in mind, it does not have the battery in it. That's why it's showing the uh, 53%, but to be honest, there isn't much difference if you think about it. There are uh, less than 90 grams. A battery is generally going to be 170 grams. It depends on the battery. You can get batteries from, let's just say you use a shorty 200 grams to a full size battery, which is going to be close to 300 grams. Uh, but point is overall without the battery is 1489. I'm rounding.
And this is the 2.0. Now, uh, both of these weights are approximate, and I'll tell you why it's part of it, the tape, uh, and it's used, although the tires were new. Uh, but here we go. So we're looking at 1446. So there isn't that much weight difference between these two cars compared to the Corvette. The Corvette was about 300 grams heavier than this one. Now, part of the reason why is you do not have a bumper. And that is a major difference between them. Now, this is a 53 and a 47. Uh, so this one's a little more balanced compared to that one. Now, you can use the battery, move it up, move it forward. You know, that's what you can do. Now, again, don't pay too much attention to the left and right because there is no battery. But if you look at the difference in weight, there's more than 100 grams now. So once you put that battery in the 2.0, the 2.0 is going to be better balanced compared to this one right over here. That's also something to keep in mind because that's going to affect when you're taking turns. So going left and right, your weight balance is going to, that's going to make a big difference. Uh, so things to keep in mind. Now, let me go through and start actually taking the bodies off. So here we have the two vehicles, and without the bodies off, it's uh, it's pretty obvious that they're very, very similar vehicles. Uh, to be honest, it's the same thing. This one's just a stretched out version of that one. Uh, and if I flip them and you look at the under chassis, you can see that. So let me do it this way. Uh, and there we go. So in reality, just like in my other video, uh, before I got my hands on this thing, and if you've seen my Corvette 3.0, you can actually just replace everything in the center, put this whole rear clip on that vehicle, this whole front end clip on this vehicle, and everything's a direct fit. The only thing that you have to do is, you have one, two, these two screws, if you have not seen my teardown videos for my 2.0, I have a series of videos where I do a full teardown of the 2.0. It's the same process as the factory 5 and the 3.0. So if you ever need to repair them, that's how. I have a video about the must upgrades. It's the same must upgrades for that one, which the other car over there has them. So I'll show you those in a bit. But you just remove this screw here so that the servo is free. And then you remove that screw right here and slide this thing out. Oh, and this screw. So it's one, two, three, four, five. If I have it correct, maybe I missed one. I doubt it though. And then this will just slip out. Same exact thing over here. One, two, that one. Servo, that top one. This will slide out and then you can slide this one in. Now, do you really want to do that? No, probably not, maybe. And the reason why I'm saying that is the body mounting system is really the same. You can swap this one, you can swap that one. So you can swap them because, I mean, these are, these are wider. You can actually slide these out, which will give you more stability in the body because it will be further out in the corners versus this one that's in the middle. This is the same mounting system as the Ford GT which is the 2.0 with the GT body. It's the same thing. Uh, this one just happens to be the Mustang. And if you buy the GT, you know, any of the 2.0s, they'll come with both of them, so you can swap them out. Uh, so the rear end, not a big deal. You can swap this out and then just ream the wider holes. These actually slide out as well. Uh, so that'll work perfectly fine. All the components are the same, except for the shocks. And I'm gonna talk about the shocks in a bit and the shock tower. So this is not the same, this is not the same, but not a big deal. Uh, but here's the thing though, if you actually swap the rear ends on these cars, this rear end will work and you can use the just standard length touring car shocks in the rear versus this one. Keep in mind that this one, they're smaller because they're scale, right? There's really no reason why you would want these small little tiny shocks other than the scale factor. That's the only reason why. 
uh, which I have to check that one. Nope, it's fine. Uh, so that's the only reason why you would want these, just because they're skill. So really, a an upgrade that you could do to the Factory 5 is just get the shock tower for the 2.0 and get the shocks for 2.0, or any touring car shocks that are aluminum. That'll fit. Uh, now the front, okay, the fronts are gonna run into a bit of a pickle. And the reason why is that right there. So the front body mounting system. Uh, if you really want that clean look in the front end, that's what I'm referring to as the clean look, right? Then you're kind of stuck in your out of luck. But let's just say you want to rig something else. So, I mean, good luck with that, first of all. Uh, but you could replace the shock tower and the shocks in this front end. Actually, the entire front end will just bolt on. It's a direct fit. The only thing is, uh, you're gonna have to find a way to mount the shocks. So something that I would do is, if you buy the, the shocks, sorry, not the shocks, the body mounts for a Traxxas Slash, the stock mounts. See those two holes there? All right, so those two holes, you can actually run a screw from underneath and then just screw the slash mounting uh, bits right in here. Just cut them to size, and then once you come to the correct size, you will have to ring the holes in here and then use body clips, uh, and that would work. So it'll go right in here, and then you have that mounting system. So then you can use standard size shocks. You're not going to be able to use the front bumper though. So this whole front bumper, you will not be able to use it because it will not fit. This is why it will not fit. Again, it's for the scale look. That's the reason why. So this is right up against this, uh, which is another problem. This is why I said approximate weight. I'm waiting on those parts. Uh, they're supposed to arrive today, so we'll see. I'll probably just swap them from one of my other Vortex uh, for now. Uh, but that's what happened. I took an impact right over here, stripped that out. Now that's something that does happen regardless, but on this 2.0, I don't know if you can see the yellow paint right here, hit a wall, this thing just bent in completely, and then I just went, I just got off the driver's stand, came over, popped it back out, started driving the car again. Nothing happened to this car. This, the, this is the car I was driving. Uh, and the tires were new. Uh, that's after a run. But notice how nicely they wear the 2.0 tires in comparison. They break in quickly uh, and nicely versus these. They uh, not the best, not the best at all. Now I did take these wheels off and I did put the 2.0 wheels on there. It doesn't look bad. It actually doesn't look half bad. So you could use these or you could, or let's just say you wanted to use some sweeps or some other touring car tires for speed runs that are actually belted. If you wanted to do speed runs. Uh, I may do speed runs in the future with these tires just to see what happens. I'm expecting them to come off the wheel. Uh, because that's what happened to the 3.0. I had to re-glue them, just cut them off and re-glue them. Uh, but you could use these and they don't look bad. Versus the Corvette, looks really, really odd. Now, if you're wondering what these tires look like fully worn on the 2.0s, let's see if the camera will focus. Not really, but yeah, well, you can see them. The rears aren't, nope, nope, they're pretty bad. Uh, but they still have life. These, yeah, those th tread marks are pretty much gone on this side. There's just little tiny marks here on the edges. Uh, little tiny marks. Uh, now that one has a castle system. It's all right. I prefer the Tekken. Uh, if you haven't watched my video with that car back when it had a Tekken system, I was actually running this motor right here. This motor is a beauty. Uh, this is the one I would recommend. 2S power with an RX-8, which is gonna go back in that car, uh, the RX-8 is. Uh, it can go on 2S over 60 miles per hour. I think I got it to about 103 kilometers per hour, which is 163, 60, sorry, 
103 kilometers per hour is about 63, 64 miles per hour. And that's just 2S. And this motor didn't care. I could drive the entire pack, run it, bash with it. You can run it on the track for five minutes straight. This motor did not care at all. No, I was not running a fan or anything on it. Uh, at some point, I'm gonna try this one on it just for kicks and giggles. Uh, kind of excited to put it on there. That's one of the reasons why I'm taking that out, putting the RX-8 back in so I can try this motor. So hopefully I can get that video in soon. But going back to these vehicles right here, uh, the shocks. Uh, you can use regular touring car body shocks, uh, but these are shorter by about three millimeters with those mounts. So that's sort of the issue. If you do go with the regular shocks, it's going to push the arms down and it's going to lift the vehicle. So your arms are going to be like this instead of horizontal. So that's something to keep in mind because these, I believe, are about... If I measure them on, I should really take them off. But if I measure them on, they're probably about 38, just under 39. Uh, so I'm going to go here. So I'm going top to top of the screw. Uh, 37.8. Let's see. Let me try this one. Although top to top of the screw, this is I'm going inside hole of the screw. About 38. All right, so we're looking at about 38. Uh, those, or those, they're about three millimeters longer. If I were to do the same, I'll just make sure this thing is zeroed. Oh, the wrong button. All right, let's do this one. Let's do bottom to bottom. Uh, 41.6, so about three and a half millimeters. Uh, you could use these shocks, for example, if you bought, find a shorter body, that'd be great. Or you can limit the shaft on the inside. Just put some nylon washers in there, some 440 watt. Actually, you know, these are, I think these would be a six, 654, I think they're called, 632, 632, I think they're called. Uh, you can do that or you can try uh, threading this in just a little longer. You may have to go in there with the drill, drill a little bit in it and then do that and then just use the hardware for this vehicle. Uh, this is this is an x-ray. You don't have to use x-ray. Yokomo is less expensive. So I would get those parts for Yokomo. I don't remember the sizes. So you're going to have to look at the manual and get them. It's some odd size, 5.8 millimeters or 5.9. I don't Remember, I don't even know why I'm using this side. Uh, but the ball is, it's a five point something. It's about a 5.9 millimeter ball. And then it uses a three millimeter uh, screw to hold them in. So that's something you could use for the shocks. Or like I mentioned, just get the Fortec 2.0, place it in there. Uh, but that is the general. These, diameter, 76 millimeters, so good luck finding anything aftermarket. Uh, you could get some foam tires. Foam tires, there's a lot of them that are 70 millimeters. They're going to work. Uh, they're going to be a little smaller, but foam tires are awesome. Uh, depending on the surface, they may not last very long, but foams, foam tires grip very, very well. Versus these, I believe, are 66 or 67 millimeters. I want to say they're 66, but I could be wrong. Next thing you know, they're 68. Anyway, they're in the high 60s versus these are in the 70s, mid 70s. Uh, those are some of the things to keep in mind. Now, again, differences. It's the same servo, everything. This is just longer. This one here, just like the 3.0, has a little center brace for the shaft. But everything else is interchangeable between the two. So, uh, this being said, uh, which one would I get? Well, both, I got them both. Uh, but if you really had to pick between one or the other, uh, the Factory 5 looks amazing. Uh, this is a vehicle that you would get for the looks. 
Uh, to be honest, it's going to peak whatever speed is. I did not gauge the top speed because it's really not that important. Uh, but within a few meters, you're gonna reach top speed. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. I mean, in seven meters, about, well, 21 feet, 22 feet, it's gonna reach top speed and it's gonna seem slow after that, probably even sooner than that. Is it very peppy and torquey? Yes, it is, it is, it is. Both of them are uh, in short distances. So if you're driving this about in a driveway, you're probably never gonna to hit top speed and it's gonna seem like it's super fast. Something else too is this one loves to lose traction. Uh, so if somebody's watching you driving it, it's gonna look cool as can be. If you're the one driving it, you're gonna quickly realize that it's not because you're an amazing driver and you can do stunts, it's because the truck is wild and crazy and wants to destroy itself. I'm exaggerating a little, but the point is you're always trying to correct. So sometimes it'll do some really cool sort of 180s or even 360s and take off, but it's, it's all by accident. The vehicle is just rolling, losing traction, slipping and sliding. Uh, so again, fun little basher, yes. Uh, are you gonna break stuff? Yes, uh, more than likely because you don't have that front bumper and this body is pretty flimsy in comparison. Uh, but they're both very, very good vehicles. Some shops, because these things, I'll be honest, they don't sell as much as those. Sometimes they actually have deals just to move the product off the shelves because it's costing them money to have it in there, in essence. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, now, some of the upgrades that you can do, well, I have this one right over here to show you. So I already talked about the shock. So the rear, you can just swap out the rear for the Fortec 2.0 and then just get that body mount adjusted, even move the shocks a little farther out. The front is a little more challenging, so you can get that front shock tower, then put regular shocks in here. And then, like I said, in those two little holes, right there, which are also right here, you can install the Traxxas slash body mounts, the, the front post, it's the front post that you want to install. Uh, and then do that, and then you can run regular shocks in the front because these are shorter. Something else is this. So I'm not sure if you can see them. Uh, so these are, is it ST? I always forget the brand. Uh, right in there. Oh, you can't really see them. So these are the CV drive shafts uh, or CVDs. These are amazing. I, I do not recommend the Traxxas ones though. Uh, if you have seen my videos, they fall apart. Uh, they're probably good if you're gonna stay brushed, but if you go brushless, they fall apart. Uh, the, the pins will slip out all the time. Now I do have a Traxxas spool in here, which is pretty good. You don't have to go with the Traxxas, but this one, the front is locked. And that's gonna make the vehicle handle so, so much better. So in RCs, because they're so small, and there's so little traction because there's so little weight compared to a real ve real vehicle. Uh, when you turn, it doesn't really matter because when you're turning, this one is doing a sharper circle than this one or smaller circle. Uh, so you're gonna be either dragging the tire or spinning a tire if they're connected. So generally you want a differential here to make up for the difference between the two wheel speeds, the inner, which is slower, and the outer, which has to travel faster to keep up. On a real vehicle, if you were to put a locker in the front, yeah, good luck turning. Uh, it's, you're gonna need to go into the next country in order to complete your turn. Obviously exaggerating, possibly. Uh, but on something so small like this, locking the front will actually help the front tires just pull the vehicle. So it'll be more stable when you're taking turns. It'll want to slide a lot less than this one already does, uh, which is something that I'm gonna end up doing. I'm gonna end up swapping these eventually. Maybe I'll make a video. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but uh, my main project is actually putting that Tekken motor in, in that car and then testing it out uh, because I miss it. That's the reason why. That one's, that one's all right. That one's 35 kV. The only issue though is just in case you're planning on putting that into something like this because you're thinking, oh wait, that castle system, isn't that Ford is capable? 
Uh, yes, it is. I mean, it's 3,500 kV, I think, on uh, this motor. Uh, the ESC is really nice, though. Uh, the thing is that you're going to have to use two 2S short packs, something like you would use on a crawler or a drone, and run them in series so that you keep it light. Because if you use a 4 S pack, for example, a 6,000 milliamp hour battery by Gen's Ace, which I tried it, it's too heavy. And it really throws off the balance of the vehicle because that pack is, I don't remember, it was 350 grams. I don't remember. It's a very heavy pack. So it makes the car lean too much. So it loses traction on the opposite wheels. Uh, and then it doesn't handle. Uh, so then you have to manage the weight of the vehicle. Anyway, it's not really worth it. Tekken 2S with that 43 uh, HD Pro, you can break 60 miles an hour. Uh, well, I am running the hot racing. Uh, so if you check out that video, I'm running a hot racing spur gear, which I want to say it's a 48 tooth spur um, because Traxxas only goes down to the 50s. I don't remember if it's a 55 tooth or something like that. I think they have a 72, 62, no, 75, 62, 55, something like that. That was a 48 tooth. Uh, and then pinion, I don't remember what the pinion is, but check out that video. Uh, part two, I think I go over the install. Part one, I just do the runs, but you have to trim that little hole so the gear doesn't hit. Uh, for the pinion. Uh, but going back to the Factory 5, is it a nice looking car? It's a beautiful, beautiful looking car. Uh, the body is amazing. I mean, the detail is marvelous. Traxxas has done such an amazing job with it. Everything's pre-wired, ready to go. Uh, is it the best handling vehicle? No, it's not. Uh, are the tires awesome? No, they're rubbish. They're some of the worst tires out there, probably. Uh, the 2.0 tires, again, a little nicer. They will fit. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, but not the best, and you're not going to really find anything better for that diameter. Uh, Supra, yes, but the offset is different, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, so foams, you can do foams. are going to be 70 millimeter instead of 76. So that's something else to keep in mind. So whatever you do, you're going to have to go down on diameter. You can go with touring car tires, uh, maybe get some USGT wheels so they look pretty nice. There's some silver wheels out there that look like the old American racing wheels. And then uh, get some belted tires if you really want to do speed runs with it. But then again, I would just go with the 2.0. Why? Because you really need an aerodynamic body and something with a wing. This thing's just going to fly off. Well, the whole vehicle is going to lift up at speed. Uh, something to keep in mind. So that being said, uh, this is just my little general overview. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully it was informative or at least entertaining. Please subscribe if you have not, and I'll catch you in the next one. My car, my, my rod.